Good morning and a very warm welcome to this Eucharist for the Parish of Christ Church in Lancaster. Perhaps I should also say happy birthday, for today is the Feast of Pentecost, the birthday of the Church. We remember how the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus' disciples to unite them together and to send them out into the world. And it brought about a whole new way of praying and worshipping and living together, something which is good news for us in this lockdown period, that the Holy Spirit still stirs among us and leads us into something that is a new normal, hopefully closer to God's kingdom. If you'd like to follow the words to the prayers and the readings, these can be found on the week's pew sheet. And if you have it, you may also need this orange sheet of paper a little later in the service, as well as your Pentecost candle. And if you've not yet received one of those, please let me know and we will get one to you. So let us pray. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord. And we have walked with him through his journey of love. In these last 50 days, we have faced the agony of his suffering and death upon the cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself in the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee will bow and every tongue confess that this Jesus is Lord. And now, with his followers in his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. So we're reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared before them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Holy Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has made known to us by the Spirit. 
for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us, in penitence, open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. So may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So knowing God's forgiveness, his grace and his many gifts to us, we praise him in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we continue in prayer. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And today's psalm is Psalm 104, with the response, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea spread far and wide, and there move creatures beyond number both small and great. There go the ships, and there is that leviathan, which you have made to play in the deep. All of these look to you, to give them their food in due season. When you give it them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good. When you hide your face, they are troubled. When you take away their breath, they die, and return again to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. So shall my song please him, while I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. And a reading from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord 
except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given, through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptised into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the one Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I grew up in East London which often meant that I was the ethnic minority in my class at school. If you went out along the street, you would hear Urdu, Arabic, Gujarati, Greek, Polish, Tamil, Croatian, Yiddish, French, and many other languages spoken, not to mention several accents and dialects of English. Being surrounded by so many different sounds, I was always amazed at how rich and diverse human communication could be. And I must admit, not a little envious of people who were fluent in multiple languages and alphabets. Today we heard again the story of how the disciples found themselves suddenly speaking to people whom they'd never met in languages that they had never before been able to understand. It was like the reversing of the Tower of Babel, where once people had been scattered by barriers of language and understanding, now, once again, were united in hearing about Jesus. And as St Luke writes his account of the coming of the Holy Spirit, he's almost breathless with all the details telling us how important this day was, what a big change happened in his life and in the lives of all those disciples. But Luke is also linking this experience to a much older story. 
Now, 50 days after the Israelites had escaped from Egypt, Moses left them and went up a mountain. He was surrounded by wind and fire until God's voice spoke and gave him the Ten Commandments as a sign of the promise that God was making. And so, as the Israelites set out and walked together across the wilderness, they learnt a new way to live together and to worship God. And so, fast forward to Jesus' time, 50 days after the resurrection, Jesus too had gone up a mountain and ascended into heaven as the disciples looked on. The Holy Spirit came in wind and fire with a new way of living together where all people would be called God's people, not just because of the law and the commandments, but by faith and hope and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. St Paul's insight in his letter to the Corinthians is that the Holy Spirit doesn't just give the gift of being able to speak in many languages. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, prophecy, discernment, all are given and guided by the Holy Spirit. And in different measures, they cause us to live together a little differently, to speak a little more of God's words, wiser, healed, more aware, and more faithful. Now last week, Pat asked us to consider that waiting for Pentecost is like waiting for the new normal. She encouraged us to see that life after lockdown can be different. It can be brought closer to God's purposes of justice, hope, healing, and peace for all. And it has certainly been a fiery and tumultuous week, not least when our bishops have received death threats for challenging the behaviour of those in power. The language has been angry and frustrated, spilling out and collectively raising blood pressures. But there are signs of hope, not least here in Lancaster, as our own political leaders and councillors begin to plan for life after the pandemic and seek to put the climate crisis and community building at the heart of where next. So what does Pentecost mean for us today? It comes back to the Holy Spirit's gift of languages And I don't mean the ability to speak six different languages, although lockdown might have given you ample opportunity to learn a new tongue. Rather, as we step out into a new way of living, we go as Christ's disciples into a strange and unfamiliar world. We can pray for the Spirit's gifts, the ability to speak words of kindness and hope, to be the wise and discerning people in the voices in the room, and the ones who make room for peace and justice to dwell. We can be the ones who persistently cry for healing on behalf of those who have no voice. We can be the ones who have the faith that Christ walks beside us, blessing and sharing life and love. The Gospel promise to us today is that this language of the Holy Spirit, this language of love and kindness and justice and healing, will be living water for all God's people. Amen. So we declare our faith in the God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, 
in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son together, is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So in union with Christ and in the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit on each of us, and so set our hearts on fire with love for you, that we pour out that love in service of you and all your children. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving Father, on the church's birthday, fill your church throughout the world with your Holy Spirit. Bless our bishops, Julian, Philip and Jill, all priests, deacons and readers in this area, and all those who serve you in this church community. Give us all the grace to use the fruits of your spirit and the diversity of gifts you have given us each uniquely to grow your kingdom and build our community in our parish and city. Show us your will and give us grace to follow it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for those who live and work in Tarbot Street and Eyre Street. We also pray for the work of the Royal Infirmary, all the staff, patients and families there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, bring peace justice and wisdom of your spirit to the decision-making of the world's leaders. We pray for an end to the violence in Minneapolis, Mozambique, Nigeria and Hong Kong, and for the swift restoration of homes and businesses in Bangladesh and West Bengal after Cyclone Amphan. Give strength and courage to all working to prevent the strength spread of COVID-19 and to rebuild livelihoods and economies. Send your protection upon all refugees in camps and on the move as they try to find safety and security. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, Father, give us grace to steward your creation wisely, to use its resources carefully and fairly for the good of the poorest and for future generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
nurturing Father, send your comforter to be with all who are in any kind of distress at this time. Strengthen and reassure those who are sick in mind, body or spirit. Those who are worried about feeding their families or feeling the pressures of lockdown. We bring before you especially Eddie Barandino, Stephen Gardner, Paul Swarbrick, Richard Impey, Angie Topham, Michael Greenhay, Bill and Ivy Buckley, Pat Brooks, Ernie Wilson, Youngblood McRae and Olive Nichols, and those known to us who are in need of your healing spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Immortal Father, we pray for the souls of all who have died recently, remembering especially Norman Truitt and young Arnold Reyes. May they rest in your eternal peace and send your spirit to comfort those who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially on Norman's family and Anna and her family. May they know your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Therefore, rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Elizabeth and all the saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given the spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Blessed be God, who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, and fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, everlasting and almighty God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. This day we give you thanks because in fulfilment of your promise, you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, leading us into all truth and uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your gospel to all nations, and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, we join our voices with angels and archangels, and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells, ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, hose up in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us 
his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour, glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we pray the prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. So we continue in prayer. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'd like to invite you to turn to the orange prayer card and if you have a candle at home, if it's not already lit, to take this moment to light that too. 
Normally it's Easter, um, we would light a great candle to remind us that out of darkness God brings light, out of the resurrection God walks with us, giving life and love to all he meets. Unfortunately we can't quite do that this year, but I hope that as we share the light in our own homes and within our own families, it would come as a reminder that God is a God who sends us out into the world. God walks with us as we take his good news to those who hear it. So as you sit with that warmth, that living flame before you, let it be a reminder of God's Holy Spirit resting on you today and on your life and on the people that you will meet this week. So we pray. Be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving power. Speak in us, wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing and peace. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, Ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we keep a moment of stillness as we wait on that promised spirit. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love with pentecost dawns the age of the spirit now the flame of heaven rests on every believer strong and weak women and men tell out your word the young receive visions the old receive dreams with the new wine of the spirit they proclaim the reign of your love amid the birth pangs of the new creation the way of light is made known. Source of freedom, giver of life. Blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. So just before our final blessing, a couple of notices as we come to the end of our service. Firstly, um, there's a very warm invitation to join all the churches in Lancaster this afternoon for a time of Pentecost praise. Unfortunately, we can't physically be together, um, but there is music, prayer and worship happening on YouTube this afternoon, on Facebook this afternoon, I beg your pardon. Um, do join in if you can. Our own Bishop Jill is speaking at half past four but the whole event kicks off at half past one. So do encourage you to go and dip in and out or maybe stay for the whole time. Secondly, um, given that the church is in a bit of a time of transition at the moment and our hall is, is not open for bookings, we're looking at ways of fundraising to help firstly bring us together and um, have some events to look forward to 
and to welcome people too, but also to raise some funds for the church's upkeep as well. So if you'd be interested in joining in the fun fundraising group, um, or if you've got some ideas about uh, what we could do when lockdown lifts a little further, uh, do get in touch with myself or with Hilary and uh, we'll hopefully begin planning for the future. A couple of weeks time it is PCC and that's on the 17th of June. So if you have ideas or thoughts or reflections that you want to feed into the Church Council's planning and um, deliberations for the future, please do be in touch as well. Um, the PCC is an elected body, so its, um, its members, its representatives are accountable to the whole congregation, to the whole parish. And as you've probably appreciated, there are a lot of big decisions to make about the future of our ministry and the way we worship in coming months. So it would be good to have your thoughts and feedback on that too. And lastly, there are a couple of festivals coming up uh, tomorrow, that's Monday at six o'clock. There'll be a Eucharist as we remember the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth, a really joyful story of two women meeting each other in their pregnancy and celebrating all that God had done for them. So I do encourage you to join that if you are able. Lots of other good things on the pew sheet, but I would leave you to read Mark and inwardly digest that at a later point. Do join us for coffee after the service and that's on Zoom. So we we'll hope to see you there as well. So, a prayer of God's blessing. The spirit of truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.